Cadillac plastering technique in wet areas is a skill set that requires practice and understanding to master. This series of tutorial videos is meant to be a broad overview of the methods used. We recommend testing and practicing all of the steps and techniques to ensure that you have an adequate understanding prior to starting a Tadalac project. The Limestrong Tadalac finish for wet areas must be applied over our base plaster to be functional. Base is applied in two separate coats with dry time in between. The objective in the base application for Tadalac is to achieve a very flat surface with an even thickness. Tools needed for application are masking tape and a drop cloth to protect the floor, a high speed drill and mixing paddle, hawk and trowel, sponge float, neoprene float, scraper. One bag of Limestrong base requires 8 liters or just over 2 gallons of water. It is best to start with less water and add a bit more as you mix to adjust the consistency. Add about a third of the bag of plaster at a time and mix well. Scrape any dry plaster off the sides and into the mix. Continue to add plaster and mix until the bag is empty. If needed, add small amounts of water as you go to get the right consistency. Once all of the plaster has been added and you have the right consistency, mix at high speed for three full minutes to ensure a smooth mix. To ensure perfect edge details, it is recommended to re-mask between coats. Rather than have to redo your entire masking job, use a strip of one inch tape at the plaster interface. This edge tape will be removed and replaced between coats. When your thin set key coat has cured and completely dried, use a broad scraping knife to remove any high spots or ridges that may exist. Coarse sandpaper can be used to detail outside corners. Using a rigid stainless steel trowel, apply a generous coat of Limestrong base. Just thick enough to completely cover the texture of the key coat. When you are finished with this first coat, there should be no sign of texture from the key coat showing through. When the wall has dried about halfway, come back with a damp sponge float to smooth and even out the surface. Use the float to knock down ridges and high spots. The amount of water you will need on your float depends on how dry the wall is. If you damage or tear the wet plaster with the float, it is too early and you need to allow the wall to dry more. Allow the first coat of base to dry completely, typically overnight. Give the first coat a quick scrape to remove any high spots or inconsistencies. The 
sand the corners if needed to create the desired shape. Apply the second coat of base to a thickness of about 1 8 of an inch. Take care to apply as flat and even a coat as possible. The dry first coat of base will absorb moisture from your plaster as you work. Move efficiently and always maintain a wet edge. A 90 degree outside corner tool can help to create crisp corners. Apply the plaster liberally to the corner and then run the corner tool down. Take care to clean up any lines or ridges left on the tool. When the wall has dried about halfway, use a damp sponge float to smooth and even out the plaster. The sponge can grind down high spots and fill in low spots. Take your time with this step to achieve a flat, even surface. Allow the wall to dry to about 70%. Use a stiff neoprene float to further flatten the wall. The green sponge float can be used to moisten the neoprene float as you work. At this stage, the plaster surface should be firm enough that the neoprene float is not disturbing the surface much at all. Because it is more flat and more rigid than the sponge, it will plane down high spots more effectively. Before the wall has completely dried, smooth over the surface with a trowel. This step serves to compress and knock down any sand grains that may be protruding from the floating process. Allow the base coat to dry completely before beginning the Tadillac finish coat.